sometimes we'll do an exercise, for instance, there was an exercise that Vanessa and James, Vanessa and James have been fantastic with this too. A lot of the, the techniques I have are, are quite modern, I, su I suppose, and they, they've been so flexible and willing to try things. But, but I might do an exercise where before every line they say in a scene, they first of all have to say, I don't care. So you might say, um, you and I are too wise to woo peaceably. I don't care. It appears not in this confession. Uh, there's not one wise man amongst 20 will praise himself. You see, I don't care. So you, you, you add before the line and after the line some phrase like that. Another phrase you might add is, um, no, you don't understand. Or the person who you speak to, if I said, um, if I, if I said some line of Shakespeare, it might be, um, please would you move that glass onto the floor? You would say to me, do you mean, please would you move that glass onto the floor? And I would say, no, I mean, please would you move that glass onto the floor? <laughs> and then you might say again, do you mean, please <laughs> would you move that glass onto the floor? And the thing is that the actor cannot repeat the, the no means that I can't repeat what, so if you mimic back the way I've said it, then I have to say no, I mean please would you move that glass onto the right. floor. Right, you have to change the so, stress. You see, so, yeah, so what it does is it, 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 without us sitting around talking about how we might play the scene, um, we play it. And, and for me, what I've found in the last 10 years is that talking about how you do something, whatever that is you're gonna do, can, can, can be helpful, it can also build up a big expectation of how it must be. And, and then sometimes what it actually is, is repressed by that expectation, which has come from your mind, of how it should be. And, and actually, for me, I find um, playing, getting up and playing, uh, and finding what comes spontaneously when I'm with the other actor and really speaking with them, that, that's a more fruitful way uh, for me to find out what to do. So I'm very, I, I like to just get up and play even when I don't know what, what I'm doing and find out by making mistakes. Uh, I find that even carries on in performance because I feel more and more that there's something particular that goes on in a theater, mm -hmm. a live theater, uh, which is that when, if we do it well enough and all of you are focusing on the story at the same time, then there's what I would call a collective consciousness comes into the room, and, um, and I, I certainly feel able to receive ideas that are greater than my own personal ability to think up things. So I find I get a lot of ideas from playing with an audience. I'm often surprised when you laugh at something I'm doing. I don't know why they're laughing at that. <laughs> and, um, and then I realize why you're laughing, and, and I do it again, and you stop laughing. <laughs> <laughs> And then, and then gradually, I claw myself back to the in, innocent place I was uh, when you did laugh. So, so it always moves, doesn't it, from con unconsciousness to consciousness to unconsciousness that goes round. But I, I, I find, I, 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 I don't think of the imagination as a, as a purely um, um, self-generating feature of the mind. I think the imagination also receives Ideas. I don't know where they come from, but I, and maybe they just come from my own unconscious. But I, I certainly get ideas when I play that I, I that are better than I could have thought up if I actively just tried to do the work. It's a bit like when you. So, so, to, to some degree, the work in rehearsals is like preparing the ground for planting a bunch of vegetables. You just got to turn it, make sure it's fertilized, you know, and and plant the things at the right depth, make sure it's watered. And then the things you planted come up, and a load of other things you didn't. <laughs> hadn't, sometimes weeds come, come up as come up as well. So the exercise is really just turning them round and 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 trying to um, keep them from trying to keep them happy with the questions rather than leaping to answers. Um, and hopefully those questions remain into the performance with you. A, a story I regularly tell them is about visiting uh, Miles Davis in the 80s and seeing Miles Davis play at the Royal Festival Hall. And Miles Davis played the whole concert like this. Occasionally he maybe turned this way, but otherwise. And his other musicians were there. And I thought, that's very strange. Is he very shy? Or does he not want, you know, he wasn't out there kind of selling it and playing this thing. 
And then I realized he wasn't presenting his music. He, he was inviting us to uh, like a rehearsal, that they were going to create music. What they liked to do was make music. Yeah. And, and we were able to just come and be there. And they might make mistakes or whatever, but how much more special to be just in a room with Miles Davis and his friends making music rather than them presenting the best bits of what they you know, think should be presented. It, and so I, I've always thought, well, that, that's how theatre should be too. It should be um, creative. Mm. 